I am a survivor of stereotypes. I'm expected to eat a certain food, drink a certain drink, to vote a certain way, think a certain way, like a certain type of movie. Not everybody's the same. Take with a grain of salt. See them as they come, their truths for what they are. I just wish everyone would see me that way, just like I see everybody else. As a choreographer, I have choreographed for quite a few plays, and there's been a couple times where I've had the director not want to pay me unless I slept with him. One in particular offered for me to go on a lavish vacation with him and meet him, and he would not pay me until I slept with him. And I will not have sex for money. Growing up, it was common for me to see frozen orange juice cans getting thrown across the kitchen, spaghetti against the wall. One time, I was uh, standing in front of my sister and I was protecting her from coming into the living room because my parents were on the ground punching each other. And I can't remember a day in my life between zero and 18 that I didn't hear them fight. Not one day. I told myself when I left home that I would never let that happen to me or anyone that I loved. I spend every second of every day breathing and processing and journaling and praying and doing things that fill me up and make me happy so that I won't turn into that. And that's what I live with. I'm bigger than my story. I remember the first time I sat at a table where someone made full space for me and I just started to cry because I didn't feel worthy of being asked the question, how are you doing? And being able to tell the answer. And so I've made it my life's work to make space for people so that they could show up and be seen and validated and heard. Because we're all souls, we're not just our outside boxes, we are souls and we are all gold. If we could all just see each other that way, you know, if we could just see that we're all just energy. And we're all African, by the way. That's where we all come from. I was married to somebody who was emotionally abusive. He had kind of explosive anger. We would be eating dinner and I would just say something innocuous and he would throw the dishes on the floor and tip the table over. He would put his hands on my neck and say, I could kill you in two minutes if I wanted to. I told him I was pregnant with our son and he said, you can't have this baby. It's gonna ruin my life. You're just an oven. I'm gonna take this child away from you. You'll die during childbirth. And it was really horrible for a lot of years, but it all worked out. I have a great son, he's 21, and this man is not part of my life anymore at all. So back in the 90s, they had these things called truancy tickets. And so they made it illegal for kids to be out of school during school hours. Now, while that's maybe admirable to some degree, for some reason, while they would drive around the neighborhood looking for uh, children to pick up and take to school because they were out of school during school hours, I would always get targeted. If it was like 8.05, picked up in a squad car. Me and other brown and black kids literally drive past white kids on the way to school. That means I get to spend my time in a squad car in handcuffs with other black and brown children while white kids walk to school eating sandwiches, and possibly shooting meth under the bleachers, get out the car in handcuffs, walk into the high school building past students who saw us in handcuffs looking like criminals, and then get tickets. So on one of these occasions, a buddy of mine and I decided we didn't want to go to school that day, and we decided to go to my dad's house. And my dad lives in a big white house, and these uh, two cops saw us get off the bus, walk across the street, around the corner and uh, pull keys out of my back pocket, open the front door and step into a big white house. So the cops knocked on the door. I opened the door and they arrested me from inside my house. As I screamed, this is my house, I live here. What I didn't know at the time, because there was no being black in LA classes they offered uh, in high school in regards to what you do when police are in your face, is that they had no probable cause to enter my house. There was no warrant, nothing. What they did was illegal. And this happened throughout my young adult life, living in Los Angeles. It happens today still. Police still harass me for being at places that I 
should be. Sometimes it feels like there's nothing I can do about it. I hear you. Asking why is all this the plan is to keep having these conversations. All of a sudden, we're moving past the trending of Black Lives Matter. Tina Fey, 30 Rock are moving their blackface episodes off of iTunes because of the guilt and white fragility. And that isn't the problem. We need to discuss this. We need to keep having the conversations about how uncomfortable and awkward our past have been so that we don't repeat it in the future. What my loving life partner and I have been doing every day is having conversations on social media, talking about the news, creating content that brings awareness to the unjust, because that's how I use my voice. And hopefully, you who are watching, not afraid to engage in the awkward and uncomfortable conversations about how you might play a role in the very system we are trying to dismantle. Here are my teeth. <laughs>